Hello all. Let us now focus on pre-Romanesque art, circa 800 to circa 1100. As in other chapters, you shall be learning the chapter with the following objectives. Acquire the basic vocabulary, concepts and criteria for understanding, interpreting and analyzing pre-Romanesque art and counter significant works of the period and enable them to study later works influenced by this period. Understand and appreciate the role of values, beliefs and ideas in shaping the art of the times. The broad aspects that we are going to focus on are as follows. The Celtic and Anglo-Saxon art, Hiberno section art, the in the Carolingian period, apart from other things, we shall at greater detail the Carolingian court palace at Achin, the Saint Gaul plan, and the Carolingian manuscripts. Then we shall look at Viking art and Ottonian art lastly. Let us start with the Celtic and Anglo-Saxon art. After the Romans departed from Britain at the beginning of the 5th century, Angels and Saxons from Germany and the Lowlands and Jews from Denmark crossed the sea to occupy southeastern Britain. Gradually they extended their control northwest across the island. Over the next 200 years, the arts experienced a spectacular efflorescence. Anglo-Saxon art covers art produced within the Anglo-Saxon period of English history. Beginning with the migration period style that the Anglo-Saxons brought with them from the continent in the 5th century and ending in 1066 with the Norman conquest of a large Anglo-Saxon nation state whose sophisticated art was influential in much of Northern Europe. The dense animal patterns that cover many Anglo-Saxon objects are not just pretty decorations. They have multi-layered symbolic meanings and tell stories. Anglo-Saxons who had a love of riddles and puzzles of all kinds would have been able to read the stories embedded in the decoration. But for us it is trickier as we are not fluent in the language of Anglo-Saxon art. Good example of Anglo-Saxon metalwork is the 7th century cover of a purse originally containing gold coins from Sutton Ho in East Angelia and on the southeast coast of England. It was discovered among the treasures of a pagan ship burial, a practice indicating the belief that boats carried the souls of the dead to the afterlife. The purse covers decoration is of gold, blousen enamel and dark red garnets. It combines early Christian interlace designs and those of Germanic crafts with aspects of Scythian animal style and other ancient Near Eastern motifs. Hiberno section art. Ireland was not occupied for a very long time because of its remote location. After Christianity was introduced in Ireland, Irish monasteries provided a heaven for European scholars, becoming centers of classical and theological studies for the next 250 years. The period witnessed 
an expansion of Christian art in Ireland and therefore called Hiberno section. Hibernia is a Latin for Ireland. Urbano section art is characterized by a combination of these two traditions, particularly the Irish curvilinear motifs and elaborated initials and the section geomorphic interlacings and bright coloring. A third influence was Mediterranean art, which became an important artistic ingredient after St. Augustine's mission arrived from Rome with many manuscripts and other art objects to use in converting the sections. This tradition brought with it the representation of the human figure. But the basic characteristics of Hiberno section art remain those of their pagan ancestors. Concerned for geometric design rather than naturalistic representation, love of flat areas of color and the use of complicated interlaced patterns. All these elements can be found in the great manuscripts produced by the Hiberno section school. Lindsay Gospels 698, the book of Duro, second half of the 7th century and the Book of Kells, circa 800. Carolingian period. At the same time in 800, Charlemagne Charles the Great was crowned Roman Emperor at St. Peter's Rome. Charlemagne ruled a large part of Western Europe, including France, Germany, Switzerland, Belgium, Holland, Northern Spain, and Italy to the south of Rome. The word Carolingian, 780 to 900, derives from the name of Charlemagne's grandfather. Charles Martel, Carolus is Latin for Charles, who defeated the Muslim invasion at Tours. Under Charlemagne, monasteries expanded the network of learning throughout Europe, in which Latin, as the language of the manuscript text, was kept alive. We could characterize the Carolingian art period as combining the portability of medieval art with a heavy dose of classical from Rome and Greece. Carolingian called Palace at Archin. The Palace at Archin was made under the personal supervision of Charles pointing to where the Forum and Senate, the theatre, the baths, the Lateran and even the aqueduct were to be built. The palace chapel meant for worship for loyalty was planned on central octagon and based in its design on S. Vitale. Bronze doors with lion head handles and finely chiseled classical mouldings, bronze railings with classical pilasters, Corinthian capitals and entablatures decorated the acanthus scrolls, again emphasized the debt to antiquity, moulds for the doors excavated at Achin in 1911 prove that this technically highly competent casting was undertaken on the spot.
the scent called plate. Monastic life centered on prayer and work, and since it also demanded seclusion, it required a special type of architectural planning. Charlie Mann draw up a standard plan for Benedictine abbeys and sent this plan to the abbot who was rebuilding the St. Gaul Monastery in Switzerland. Amongst other things, the St. Gaul plan indicates beds for 77 monks in the dormitory. Practical considerations include latrines attached to every unit dormitory, guest house and abode's house. Six beds and palaces in the refectory were reserved for visiting monks. In the surrounding buildings were special spaces for scribes and painters who spent much of their day in the scriptorium studying and copying books and teachers who staffed the monastery, schools and library. Manuscripts. Books played a central role in the efforts of Corolegian rulers to promote learning, propagate Christianity and standardize church law and practice. Imperial workshops produced authoritative copies and Carolingian scribes also worked on standardizing scripts. Capitals, major schools based on ancient Roman inscriptions continued to be used for very formal writing, titles, hand handings, and luxury manuscripts. But they also developed a new clear script called Carolingian Minuscule based on Roman forms but with a uniform lowercase alphabet that increased legibility and streamlined production. The portrait of Matthew in the early 9th century coronation gospels of Charlie Mann conforms to principles of idealized lifelike representations quite consistent with the Greco-Roman classical tradition. The full-bodied white robe figures is modeled in brilliant white and subtle shading and seated on the cushion of a folding chair set within a freely painted landscape. The way his foot lifts up to rest on the solid base of his writing desk emphasizes his three-dimensional replacement, emphasizes his three-dimensional placement within an outdoor setting. And the frame enhances the classical effect of a view seen through a window. Viking art, 850 to 1050. In the 8th century, seafaring bands and Norse seamen known as Vikings, Viking people from the coves, descended on the rest of Europe. Also known commonly as Norse art. Viking art is term for the art of Scandinavia and Viking settlements further afield. Particularly in the British Isles and Iceland. During the Viking age of the 8th to 11th centuries AD, Viking art has many design elements in common with Celtic, Germanic, 
the later Romanesque and Eastern European art, sharing many influences with each of these traditions. The success of Vikings depended on their skills as seamen and the excellence of their wooden ships. Oseberg's ship demonstrates the ingenuity and effectiveness of Viking ship design. Fast, light, maneuverable and flexible. It could be simply beached and quickly launched robbed by oarsmen and sailed in any point. Since Vikings were often moving from place to place, most Norse art consists of portable artworks such as decorated drinking horns, body armor, pagan icons, pedals and wide range of objects used in daily life. Viking craftsmen also excelled in wooden work, also excelled in woodwork and metalwork, adorning brooches, weapons, implements, and ship timbers with abstracted animal forms and elaborate pattern of interlace. Runic texts and complementary scenes were inscribed on stones and rock faces. Viking art, in common with almost Germanic art of this period, is geomorphic, but it does not attempt a naturalistic representation of animals. Instead, the animals are con contorted, often intertwined, and gripping and building each other, and often with flowing tendrils. The Vikings, both men and women, were cremated in a ship in the belief that this hastened their journey. The grave at Osberg in Norway, on the west side of the Oslo Church, was made sometime between 800 to 850 for an important lady, perhaps a queen. Alongside were buried a serving maid and a wealth of everyday artifacts, including a cart, four sledges, a loom, buckets, and other downs. She was placed inside a small cabin in the magnificent Osberg ship with grave goods stacked around her on deck. The ship itself was an elegant jaunt crucial, too low in the beam for long distance voyages. Its stem and stern posts terminating in spirals are lavishly carved with interlocking animals. They have small heads double contoured bodies and pierced heart shaped hips. Another part of the ship is carved with a variation of the gripping base. Goddess, broad bodied creatures with bulging eyes, short muzzles, snarling mouths and large teeth who clutch each other with sharp claws. Both at home and abroad, the Vikings erected large memorial stones. Rune stones are those covered with inscriptions. Those with figural decorations are called picture stones. These were pigment stresses suggesting that memorial stones are originally painted in bright colors. 
about 980 a rune stone and picture stone was commissioned by the danish king harald bluetooth circa 940 to 987 at the family burial mounts at jaling on one face of the larger jaling stone the sculptor carved the image of christ drop in the byzantine manner with arms outstretched as if crucified he is entangled in a double ribbon interlace instead of nailed to a cross a second side holds runic inscriptions and a third a striding creature resembling a lion fighting a snake the loosely twisting double ribbon interlace covering the surface of the stone could have been inspired by the hiberno section art let us now discuss ottonian period ottonian refers to the three rulers named otto who stabilized the holy roman empire after disruptions following charlemagne's death their empire included only germany and parts of northern italy and was therefore smaller than charlemagne's ottonian art was the result of three major influences a revival of northern carolingian artistic heritage a renewed interest in northern italian art and a more direct contact with byzantine art so brilliantly revived under the macedonian emperors after the final abandonment of iconoclasm in 842 the major architectural work of this period was the convent church of saint syriacus of jernot founded by margrave gero in 961 the western part is heavily emphasized by two strong staircase towers flanking a large western block with an internal western gallery very much in the carolingian tradition but externally blind arcades string courses and plasters divide up the wall surfaces into units relating to windows internal floor levels and bay divisions internally the crossing of the transept which hardly projects beyond the azel walls which hardly projects beyond the aisle walls is clearly defined by high arches carried on attached plasters across the nave and the chancel the nave is articulated by alternating columns and piers and each bay of two arches in the nave is surmounted by a gallery opening divided by four arches carried on small columns again separated from the next bay by a heavy pier and all this a clear sense of harmony is expressed achieved by balance and regular repetition of geometric units it is these qualities of order and harmony that were further developed during the 11th century both within the ottonian empire and elsewhere and were fundamental to the creation of great romanesque church bronze doors at the abbey church of st michael heldesheim were the first large scale works cast in one piece since antiquity 
made in bronze casting each door including the impressive lion heads holding the ring handle was cast as a single piece in the lost wax process and later detailed and reworked with chisels and fine tools the doors standing more than 16 feet tall portray scenes from the hebrew bible on the left and new testament scenes on the right reading upward from the annunciation at the bottom to the nolly made tangre at the top the scenes depicted in relatively high relief are characterized by thin lively figures ottonian sculpture ottonian sculptors worked on materials like ivory bronze wood and other materials they worked on church furnishings and portable art rather than architectural sculpture look at the garo crucifix Jesus is shown as a tortured martyr not as the triumphant hero Jesus broken body shakes on the cross and his head falls forward eyes closed the straight linear fall of his golden drapery heightens the impact of his drawn face emaciated arm and legs sagging torso and limb blooded heads this is a poignant image of a distilled anguish meant to inspire pity and awe in the emphatic responses to its viewers ottonian illuminated manuscripts book painting is one of the richest form of christian art produced during the ottonian era there is a degree of simplification a somewhat broader use of forms an emphasis of essentials and the elimination of them at times rather fussy detail of carolingian painting as well as use of lighter chalkier palette which more clearly differentiates it from its carolingian model 